In the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, Colombia, there exist four indigenous groups that protect what they call the heart of the world. These four tribes, the Arhuaco, the Kogi, the Wiwa, and the Conquamo, say that this area ecologically and energetically influences the entire planet and that what happens here within the heart of the world has major effects on what happens everywhere else. These tribes have existed here in this land for thousands of years and say that they have been tasked as the defenders of this land, which they see as being vitally important to the health of the entire planet. Unfortunately, this sacred area is under grave threat as every day many acres of land are being cleared, burned, and deforested to make way for farms and coffee plantations. The sacred trees, plants, animals, insects, springs, and rivers that make up this unique ecosystem are rapidly being displaced, destroyed, and poisoned with agricultural pesticides. Even the communities that live in this area are suffering from the health effects of the toxic chemicals used for farming. Within this sacred territory, there exists a mountain called Biskungui. According to the four tribes, this mountain energetically governs the planet's food systems. They say that what happens to this mountain will reflect into the world and affect the food of the entire planet. Currently, this mountain is being heavily deforested. The indigenous communities are being moved out and the land is being illegally sold, occupied, and farmed for coffee plantations. The Arwako tribe, in conjunction with the organization Sun Nation, are working to buy back this mountain to help preserve what remains and to regenerate what has been lost. They want to start with buying the top of the mountain, which the Arwako see as most sacred and which contains the last of an endangered tree species sacred to the Arwako. They then want to work their way down the mountain with the goal of eventually reclaiming this sacred land that rightfully belongs in the care of the Arwako and the other three indigenous people of this land. This video documents a journey up the mountain where members of the Arwako, along with Diam of Sun Nation, show exactly what is happening to this mountain and why they need support. If you'd like to help in the protection of Biskungwe, please follow the link in the caption below this video. Any donations are of great help in the mission of protecting this important mountain and its endangered ecosystems. There's a new coffee farm they just planted. This is how the farmers clear their land. Ready to farm and burn it all. So they just cleared this. Uh, the farmers just cleared this last year. And you can see, especially in that ravine over there, there's four of them. But that one's one of the bigger ones. Each one of these ravines has a spring in it. Mm. And now these farms are coming up to the canyon each one of the ravines and the farmers burn their land but then they also fumigate so there's glyphosate or whatever that thing is called in it and then every time it rains it brings that those chemicals down into the springs and then into the runoff and then down into the river and in the same time they're expanding and they clear this forest and in this specific spot where it's now clear which just got cleared last year there's specific animals that come here just to listen and go back and report to Nawasimake. It's like part of their ecosystem cycle of how they interact with the, the biosphere here. And now that there's no trees here, those animals can't come here anymore. Mm. So the water's getting poisoned, the land's getting, gonna have erosion, it's getting, losing all of its life, and the animals can't come here anymore either. All because of farmers. We continued the hike up Biskungui, and as we did, we continued to see areas where big portions of the mountain have been burned, cleared, and planted with coffee, and not only planted with coffee, but fed with 
pesticides and many toxic chemicals that damage the land and the surrounding ecosystem. All right, so they're showing us here in these mountains right here where this, where this coffee is. This whole place has been deforested and burnt to plant coffee. They have a small uh, nursery down there and they want to show us so that we can capture this right here. It says uh, it's the category is two level t toxicity, moderately dangerous. It can hurt you. It is a concentrated soluble and it's an agricultural herbicide. And it's got paraquat ion, whatever that is. And so they're saying, see, here's the evidence. This is the poison that they use. And it goes down into the four different springs and carries it down into the river and killing things all along the way. Microorganisms, poisoning people, getting children sick. With poison, in our reserve we, we do healthy practices. For a person, we have health and medicine. But this type of cultivation, you can see it. They do it with chemicals and fire. Uh -uh. They put another chemical that they put on the roots. And, that, and that's a chemical that's bad for your veins. And they put that on the food so that it grows fast. But your food itself has that in it. And then we eat it in our space from our supermarket. And that's where we start getting cancer and different things because it affects our, our blood veins and it affects our minds. So like we said just now, we don't know where this stuff comes from, the food that we eat. He says, look, you can see they're thinking about taking all of this forest down to put coffee. And now the, the mountain itself, the site, is losing its power because that's the power it has, its spiritual significance, its spiritual and energetic power that it puts out into the world. You can see up there, there's even a communications tower on top of it now. And, and they're even taking more trees down there, putting more coffee, putting more chemicals at the top of it. This mountain is one of the most sacred sites to the Arwako and one they see as vitally important for the whole of the earth. As we walked up the mountain, we saw that devastating amounts of the forest here had been cleared. And at the very top of the mountain, which the Arwako view as the most sacred part, there was a large clearing with an illegal cell phone tower and the surrounding ground planted with coffee. So this is the communication tower. The claro or the sabemos? No, 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 no. No exactamente, pero es una torre que está conectado de Pueblo Bello a to connect Pueblo Bello to here. Ajá. Y han sacado permiso con ustedes? Nada. Ya tenemos una denuncia. Ah, tenemos un documento. 
they have a document that they made that's denouncing this. So we can put that on the chain. Perfecto. In the in the denouncement of this, it says the importance of this area from the perspective of the mamos, and he thinks that tomorrow they're going to bring the document to us so that mm. we can we can see that. Oh, okay. Y uh, tal vez el, es el campesino está ganando dinero para esto también. Sí. Entonces este es el que nosotros queríamos eh, recuperar. So that they want to they want to reclaim this area because it's extremely important, and they can't let it turn into the mountain that we just passed through, which is the same mountain, just a different section. So this is their highest level of priority is to get this back to let it start growing back to how it needs to be. This is pretty much the top of the mountain. Como Biscungui es el dueño de la comida extranjera, de todos los comidas que hay, y ya siendo afectado, no solamente afecta a la comida que está aquí, sino a, a todo el nivel de vida. Y ya como los Tribagina, los que se enferman eh, de cáncer de paralítico, es principalmente es por la comida. Ya, So he says that not only is this affecting the area here with the springs and the poisoning and the, the devitalization, but the mountain itself is energetically and spiritually connected as the, the dueño, the holder, the, the, the one in charge of all of the foods for everyone inside the world outside of this energetic black line. So we're standing on top of like the the principal god and goddess in charge of our food system and he says that this is a direct relation to why our foods have so many chemicals why they're lacking so many nutrients while it why it's not done the right way with with through consciousness and that happens on a magnified level to everywhere outside in our little brother land and in that sense he's saying that's the reason that we have a lot of different cancers and and sicknesses because all of those sicknesses are coming from our food system. And this mountain is directly related to our food system. And as we're walking through it in the real physical world, it's you've got a communication tower on it. It's been pretty deforested. It's getting poisoned every, every year. This is only the, the second year that it's been like this. And this is the first year that the top has been taken over. And it's all for coffee. All of it's happening because of coffee. So, uh, some form of, of conscious consumption, some education, some form of combating volunteerism, regenerative people who want to get involved in this. We need people to come listen to these stories, understand them, and put their effort towards, you know, reharmonizing, not for the space here necessarily, but for the entire planet. And they're inviting us as little brother to say, hey, you know, we've been taking care of this space, and this is what it is, and we know this. For a fact, you can talk to all of our different tribes and all of our different elders and all of our different people and they're going to tell you exactly this. So we invite you, please come, please help. This is a global epidemic experience. So this is an endemic experience. This is not good. Wow. Okay, this is extremely, extremely important. Here, what they're looking at, it goes down a little bit where now a barbed wire fence has been put through this used to be a little pond and it's a, and it's one of the most sacred spaces here within the mountains and it what well, it's connected directly to Nabosimake and here they used to they come to consult to get notifications basically from the entire planet. This is the like a, uh, a viewing portal to the outside world. And there's many very special things that that means that you can extract from that. 
what happened was the paramilitary groups who come around and do drug running and are also paid by the biggest landowners around here to push people out so that they can keep buying up land. They came and they dug out this channel right here that we're standing on. It goes right up behind Goodwill and Ryan. And that they used to, to bring the water out to bathe in and do whatever they wanted to do. So it started to dry the, the, the pond. And then there was a very special rock that energetically kept the humidity there. And the people came in and they moved the rock. So now that, that energy portal has been broken. It's been dried. Now it's completely dry. They used to have um, different, uh, their own bananas, like a specific type of banana that's just to these mountains. And now they, um, it dried off and, and those died as well. But the Mamos say that the, what they call a document, which is like the, the energetic use and, and the existence on a spiritual plane outside of the material world, there is something that makes this exist. And the existence of that document on a blockchain, for instance, is still there and it's still sitting there. But the thing that now is gone since the rock was moved and it's dry and everything has been taken away is the seal. So there's, they said with our help and with the help of everyone else in the world, it's possible to reseal it so that that document can come back into the material world and re be what it needs to be. But if we don't do that, there is chance that the entire document and the entire consciousness and knowledge of it will be gone. Um, y el nombre del árbol? Corguina. Corguina. Corguina is the name of the tree and it has an incredible importance in their culture. They, they use it to dye for sacred energetic works in their cotton. They use it as uh, dye in their bags. They also use it for other practices and, and techniques throughout their entire culture. It's a very sacred and interconnected um, tree for them. It used to exist in other areas. It only, um, it used to exist on a different mountain where now their communication towers of the different cell phone companies have put illegal communication towers on top. And they say that energetically, that's the reason that the trees have died there and that they no longer are present. The those trees on that, the ones that used to live there and now the ones that live here, they communicate back on an energetic system back to uh, Nabusimake, just like the towers. And the ones in Nabusimake are now dying because their other pole, the energetic link down here, is, being, is, is dying. In this land, it's right next to a place that has been clear cut and it's affecting the, the energetic systems here and the, the root systems. And so these ones are getting sick and drying out. And this land here is owned by a farmer. And they're very preoccupied or very worried by the fact that these could get clear cut because just 20 yards away, it is completely clear cut. So the land they've been organizing and negotiating with a farmer and They've been able to make a personal deal two years ago. So the time is running out. The, the man is old. He wants to move to the city and he's threatening to, to sell to another farmer. And the other farmer is interested in, in planting coffee. The amount of money that's needed is roughly $80,000 in order to buy the land and conserve it under their people. And the other land that has been already deforested turned into a newly planted coffee farm and has a communication tower on it is $16,000. So combined with the two of those on the top of this mountain, uh, we can have conservation, regeneration, reforestation for a total of $96,000. The, the $16,000 land also is the forest that we need to regenerate in order to bring back the very enormously sacred lake that is in charge of Little Brother's food system. So starting with the $16,000 land to reforest, manage and work with their mamos and their energy healers to come in and figure out how to bring this lake back so that the planetary food system 
can start to heal itself. Then moving from there, putting $80,000 into this conservation project will have a very strong ba base to start taking back the whole mountain. And these are the last two of these trees? This is the last area where these trees exist. Mm -hmm. If this farm gets bought by someone other than us and gets taken and turned into a coffee farm, then they will, we will lose the DNA of this tree. The spirit of this tree will no longer be on the planet. Diam and Kelsey Faith of Sun Nation are devoted to their mission of helping the Arwako people. As they see the rapid destruction of their indigenous land and understand the significance of this territory. The most essential project that the Arwako have asked for their help with is the protection of Piskungwi. They intend to slowly buy back the rights to the mountain so they can preserve what remains and regenerate what has been lost. And they're starting with focusing their efforts on reclaiming the top of the mountain and working their way down. They are currently asking for support in this mission from those that feel resonant with the cause and are willing to offer support. I've put a link in the description below this video where you can donate to Protecting Biskungwi if you want to support, and where you can contact Sun Nation if you want to get further involved.